right, kids, who's ready for another healthy heaping of Quake expansion goodness? Today, we're going to be taking a look at Quake's second official expansion, Rogue Entertainment's Dissolution of Eternity, releasing exactly one month after Hypnotic Scourge of Armagon. Now, Rogue Entertainment, they focused almost exclusively on expansions for already existing IPs. This was their second project following 1996's Strife, a Hexen-like early RPG built in the Doom engine. Aside from Strife, Rogue's only other original game was American McGee's Alice. I've never played it before, but I've heard a lot of good things about it. civvy has got a pretty good video on it, that's really all I need for now. Rogue is an interesting studio. At the time, their offices were right down the hall from id Software, meaning any collaboration between the two likely had more fluent communication than any other collaboration id Software had at the time. I guess it wasn't meant to be though, because Rogue had to shut their doors in 2001, with much of the team moving on to work at NURB Software. And their current project at the time, Counter-Strike Condition Zero, was handed down to Gearbox, where presumably a certain Randy smothered his face all over it. Interestingly enough, the game was then handed from Gearbox down to Ritual Entertainment, aka Hypnotic Software. Interesting how these things come together. But yeah, Dissolution of Eternity. It's good. It's better than Scourge if you ask me. It's got less maps, but the maps are a bit longer. At least they felt like it. I admit by the end of the expansion, I was starting to feel a bit burnt out. But then Night Dive's Quake Remaster came out and- You just god. fucking telefragged me! Oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> what the fuck Wait, was that sound? <laughs> We. <laughs> the room, the door. Oh, oh so oh, I can, I can hear you screaming. This remaster is fucking incredible. Let me just address that right off the bat. And Machine Games' brand new expansion, Realm of the Machine, looks like a completely different game. And I mean that as a positive, even if the final boss kind of sucked. And with integrated online matchmaking and co-op right out of the gate, this is looking better than the Doom remasters we got a couple years back. I still recorded all of DOE and Quake Spasm because the remaster wasn't out by the time I finished recording it. That's just poor timing on my part. We'll be looking at the remaster more in depth when we get to Quake 64, which, to my own disbelief, comes with the remaster as a free add-on, so keep an eye open for that. And yeah, Dissolution of Eternity doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, I'm gonna be referring to it as DOE from here on. I'll do my best to not make it confusing. Unlike Scourge, though, I never finished DOE before this review, despite it being the first of the two expansions that I started playing. If you're wondering how I could have made the mistake of playing Mission Pack 2 before Mission Pack 1, it's because I'm a dumbass. Because I'm running these through Quake Spasm, I launched these through a shortcut command and named the shortcuts after after the command, game rogue and game hypnotic. And I didn't know which came out first. I played through the first episode, beat the first boss, looked up said boss on the Quake wiki, and saw it reference Scourge in the past tense, making me realize that I needed to play hypnotic first. And also unlike Scourge, there's not a lot documented about DOE's development. I don't have any developer notes or notes about who developed which map, so this isn't going to be quite as in-depth as my Scourge video. Once again, before we dive into DOE's meat and potatoes, let's go over the story, and I swear, at first anyway, it's even more simple than Scourge's. After returning to Earth after the defeat of Armagon, reality and time begin to stretch and skew, coming to the conclusion that this has to be Quake's doing, Ranger suits up to put an end to Quake's reign once and for all. And for the first episode, it's just that simple. It's a competent mat pack with some new weapon and enemy variants. Yeah, no new original weapons here. We've got several new weapon variants, like I said. We'll be getting to that in a second. But then you get to episode 2 and it turns into this grand story spanning across time. It's kind of awesome. We'll get there soon. This difficulty select hub is certainly a return to form after Scourge. I love the giant Quake logo looming overhead, but it sure is a bit on the nose. The episode select hub returns this time, which is completely redundant. Much like Scourge or Doom 2, after you finish episode 1, you're thrown straight into episode 2. So this serves practically no purpose, except... This last switch always throws me for a loop. It's behind the slipgate you come through. Yeah, we're doing Nightmare Difficulty again. If only you could grab this mega health by the episode 2 gate. I was told this was put here for deathmatch. I guess they just left it in here to garnish. I don't know. <laughs> Good first impression, fun map. Geometry and presentation is kind of basic, something that's going to be consistent with DOE for the most part. Don't forget to grab the double barrel under this lift, just be careful with the multi-ogres. Yeah, episode 1 doesn't have a lot of original enemies, but we have some variants of existing enemies. These ogres throw out cluster grenades, that's pretty self-explanatory. Just look out for your ears when there's more than one of these guys. 
All aboard the ferry, anyone got some drugma? I'll tell you, the power shield is way cooler than Scourge's empathy shield. It's a bit more complex too, negating 70% of incoming damage but only from the front side. It also entirely reduces knockback, rewarding you for facing danger. It's pretty cool. Now that's a cool door design, let me see that again. Rogue knows how to spice up a doorway, goddamn. I love how this level comes together, ending with you lowering the drawbridge you see the moment you enter the map. Once again, really good first impression. Hey, what did he do? Let him free! That is not what I meant. Hold on, I gotta prepare first. Do you hear that? Yeah, Jihun Huang is back to compose for DOE, and if it wasn't obvious, these are original tracks as well, not just recycling Scourge's soundtrack. For the most part, it's pretty similar, a lot of the sound just sort of blends together, but this track? God damn. I like this bit where the ceiling comes down to crush you and you gotta stand in the hole. It reminds me of Bookworm from Mario Party 4, aka the best minigame. And what do I get for winning? Fucking cluster grenades. Yeah, this thing sucks. I rarely use this in my playthrough. The grenades don't cluster if they make direct impact. So I guess it's good to just spread these around the map. I don't know, the new rocket launcher variant that uses the same ammo is way more practical than this thing. I don't think introducing these phantom swordsmen with the cluster grenades was as good of an idea as Rogue thought it was. And yeah, the phantom swordsmen, a cool name for a goofy as fuck enemy type. Honestly, the first time I killed one and I heard the thunk of their sword hitting the floor, I had to pause to laugh for a moment. It's just, it's so goofy. Well, at least I have the normal grenade launcher now. What? Remember to start your day off right with a couple tablespoons of quad damage. God. Damn, that is a lot of zombies. Oh boy, ain't that great. Fuckers are blocking the elevator, keeping me from moving on. Or they would if there wasn't a grate that I could shoot through. Now who's ready to meet a Lechman? We finally get the rocket launcher here, and since this is DOE, which gives you an alternate fire right off the bat... Yeah, a multi-rocket launcher, for when you really want to screw over that stray death knight. Multi-rockets use their own ammo, only one unit of ammo per shot too. It's not like it uses four rockets per shot. This sounds fucking busted, and I tried to save these multi-rockets because I thought they were going to become scarce, until I realized midway through episode 2 that I often had more multi-rockets than I did normal rockets. Yeah, imagine if the lock-on burst in Doom Eternal only cost a single rocket per volley. Ooh, that, that lava nail variant for the super nail gun looks lazy. Yeah, the nail guns get lava nails too. Literally just stronger rounds of ammo that aren't at all more scarce than normal nails. I'm not a fan of how the super lava nail gun is symbolized by a red arrow in a white rectangle, but I love the sound of the exhaust after you stop firing these things. I just wish that they did more with this, say a lava shambler variant that's immune to these lava nails. We see something similar to a lava enemy that's immune to this later, but it's only for a single map. A wasted opportunity for sure. Oh my god, again? Oh, Cave of Death, what a great name. This map is kind of bullshit. There's this recurring earthquake effect. I thought this was the result of a secret I found, but no, it just keeps happening and it's fucking annoying. It's more of a visual annoyance. This can affect your movement on the ground, but it didn't give me that much trouble. I dig the unique presentation of the level though. This rocky texture around the cave makes me think of doom. It doesn't really scream quake, but I'm not exactly complaining. And this underground arena where you need to find these switches to get a move on, it's good stuff. Lots of, oh no. Uh, I, did, I don't think that was a spawn. Nope, that 
that's a spawn. If you hated spawns in the base game, then you're gonna hate the hell spawn. If you see a green one without eyes, that means that the prime hell spawn has started duplicating itself, which it can do infinitely. Take the one out with the eyes as soon as possible. That's the one that keeps cloning itself. Otherwise, you're gonna be fighting a never ending battle. That's just what Quake needed, right? Its own pain elemental of the. <laughs> Ah, I'm starting to see where id Software got its cage writing fetish from. Oh, I remember this room. Why do I remember this room? Yep, okay, I remember. Oh, what is this, Quake 2? I'm not complaining, I wouldn't mind some Strogocyte about now. Plasma gun enabled? Wonder if it still works underwater. I don't even know why I considered that would work. This thing is nuts. I didn't know it when I found it at this time, so I'll be talking about that in a bit later. But once you do figure it out, oh god. This room was sure something. Remember the magic carpet ride from Shadow Warrior? Yeah, it's a lot like that, but not as shit and also insensitive. Oh, what the fuck? Alright, this tube is jank as fuck. Maybe it's a quick spasm thing. I haven't replayed DOE in the remaster yet, and I'm not planning to anytime soon. Oh, kill the shamblers? Oh, with pleasure. Fuck. Ah, the lightning machines. That's a descriptive name. This is some pretty crazy tech for the underworld. Kind of interesting. Remember these, we'll be seeing them... Well, actually, not for a long time, but just keep them in mind. You gotta let them power these doors and shit so you can move on. Except the final one is bugged for me. It's supposed to summon a shambler which opens the bookshelf when you kill it. Except it, it didn't spawn. Yeah, I'm a just... Alright, you didn't see anything. Oh my god, what is that hell spawn? No, no, not the not the hell spawn enemy. That fucker. These are the Wraths. Really neat design, very reminiscent of a boss we'll be meeting soon. They're essentially flying vores, which I know the thought of that alone is fucking terrifying, but don't fret. Despite firing a nearly identical projectile, it's significantly weaker. A couple of multi rockets do the trick nice and quick. This is where I discovered the magic of the plasma alt fire for the lightning gun. Yeah, it's a BFG with extra steps, firing a large projectile with the tendrils we've come to associate with modern BFG though only firing when the projectile hits a surface. This is some great crowd control, something younger me would have loved when I fucking sucked at Quake, and blows Molnir from Scourge out of the water. I wouldn't be surprised if this inspired some of Quake 2's BFG 10k, at least in one way or another. Imagine if this is the oldest ancestor of the modern BFG. I recommend using this as your spawn killer later on, ammo is pretty generous too. Oh, what's this, an anti-gravity bracelet? Does it- Oh, yes it does! Alright, I already went ape brain when I saw that parts of the level have low gravity effects back in Scourge, but now it's a fucking power-up. This is officially the best quake. I like the stained glass four horsemen of the apocalypse. That's kinda cool. None of them have tagged secrets behind them, but still offer armor and a mega health, as well as a portal to make backtracking easier once we have the gold key. Does anyone else get a stabbing pain in their side when they remember X-Men Apocalypse? Just me? That movie was so disappointing. Yeah, not a fan. If it weren't for the boss fight with Quake's Overlord at the end, I would have written this off as an overall bad map. Aesthetically, it's really nice, but the level design, it's... Okay. It's a needless scavenger hunt for these switches spanning multiple floors that just feels tedious. I think that the skull face in the side of this cave is pretty cool. Such a lust for revenge! <coughs> I'm seeing stars, holy shit. All right, Overlord, you ready to dance? Oh my God, did he just blow himself up? Is he not immune to his own splash damage? Yeah, the Overlord, the big bad of DOE. The manual states that the Overlord is Quake's next in command after Armagon, and in an act of desperation after Armagon's defeat has activated a time machine using Earth's technology to steal champions from across time, altering history in Operation Dissolution of Eternity. Yeah, we're halfway through and we just killed the expansion's big bad. And from here on, we're just cleaning up his time-altering mess. And this is when DOE really started to grip me. Oh, those look reassuring. I fucking knew it! Statue Knights, coming both in vanilla and death variety. They're literally just knights and death knights that don't activate until you hit a switch or trigger whatever it takes for these to activate. Sometimes they just wake up when you have your back turned on them, which is kinda cool. 
All right, these Death Knights are becoming a little too powerful. I really love the aesthetic of episode two. I think we're in ancient Greece right now. I don't know, I failed a couple of semesters of high school history. Well, hello there, King Neptune. It's even funnier the sec- uh, I love this mural here carved into the marble. Oh, look at that, it's a shambler without fur. Oh my god, the T-1000 is fucking pissed. Wait, that was Quake's Guardian? Yeah, these are the guys the Overlord apparently plucked from their respective times. We've got a few more variants of these fuckers to deal with before the TVA is on our ass, though. Or is Quake the TVA? I, I don't know. The group for these bosses are called the Guardians. The first one that spawns is the Prime Guardian, and I don't know, I guess he duplicates? The clones are weaker, though, and honestly, this first fight is more of a pain than the other ones, because by then we have the Plasma Gun. Elemental Fury 1, an interesting level. It's part of two levels and a total of four elemental trials. It's pretty cliche shit, but it's kinda cool to see in a Quake game. This part is focused on the trials of Earth and Wind, and since it's Earth, that means this part fucking sucks because of the earthquakes. Alright, what the hell just killed me? All right, that would explain it, you get a pass. The trial of air was fine. You jump up the tube and press the corresponding button, and if you fuck up, the air gods didn't like that one, Carl. Yeah, that's okay, I didn't want to quad damage anyway. I'm fucking flaccid right now. Hey, remember Cathan, the boss from base game that you kill by running around in circles? He's a normal enemy now. This is that lava enemy I mentioned earlier in the review. He's immune to lava nails, and I thought that I'd empty my surplus of shotgun shells into him until I realized maybe that wasn't the best idea. Multi-rockets or lightning gun are gonna be your go-to for these guys. There's only four of them, though. At least they could take damage, unlike they're dead. Nice shot, holy shit. Yeah, aside from the four Lava Boy fights, this stage was alright. I did get blown up by a Wrath, so that was pretty cool. I didn't even know that they explode. I thought that they just sort of implode on themselves. <laughs> Welcome to Quakeified Egypt, onwards to the Temple of Osiris. Wait, oh fuck you, I didn't even get to see the layout of this place. That's okay, it's kind of hard to get lost in a maze like this. At each side of the maze are two arenas that you need to clear out and hit a switch. It appears that I have created a crime against nature. Wait, did I just telefrag a knight? Oh, that was supposed to be a mini-boss. Cool that I could skip it by complete fucking accident. We'll see more of that mini-boss in a minute, so it's not like I ruined the experience. Oh, damn, they got Noah's Ark in here, too. That's pretty cool. Can you take two of me with you? Who knew that Noah had times to the one we don't name? Mummies, a mini-boss variant of zombies that can really, really take a beating. I thought they were invincible for a minute until I dumped a good amount of multi-rockets into them. Alright, that's the second of Quake's Guardians down and Osiris's weird golden pyramid conquered. Who's next? Ooh, nice pentagram drawing, Overlord. Your art skills are really beginning to shine. Yeah, this level is lame. Not bad, just boring, and kind of bland to look at. Oh, come on, Jesus. Last time I shot you, you helped me. Oh my god, did I just skip half the level on accident? Was it because I rocket jumped up to the secret here? Fuck, I didn't know how to get it. <laughs> uh, funny skeleton, man. This is kind of neat, a sort of Mesoamerican forest temple sort of deal. Oh god! This lift is inactive. Yeah, I could see that. Oh, so that's what's making that ungodly noise. Yeah, that's not very kind to my ears. Please, please stop. Uh. There goes my legs. I think I just pogoed on a saw blade for a minute. That would've been cool if this were a Mario World ROM hack. Oh, look at that. Your art skills are getting so good. I'm surprised Mama Quake doesn't hang that up on the fridge for you. All right, High Priest, how do you like your eggs? The answer is plasma gun. The 
Last Bastion, a literal name for DOE's penultimate level. And boy, is it setting the mood by immediately sending wraiths, ogres, and enforcers at me. Oh my. I feel like this map is visually calling back to the opening of episode 1 with the moat and castle aesthetic, and later on we'll see that that's probably not a coincidence. <laughs> Normally I'd protest against this, but these guys seem to be having a pretty good time. I wish I could get this much enjoyment in a sewer. Alright, call me a dumbass, but I hate these hard-to-see levers. I was stumped here for a good 10 minutes running around the sewer maze looking for where to go. Made it to the top, didn't find what I was looking for, and restarted. Turns out these giant sticks poking out of the floor are what I needed to interact with. Fuck you. The same thing is what stumped me when I played Blood for the first time. Why can't you just give these something to make them more noticeable? Yeah, okay, I get it, they stick out of the floor, but I just think that's part of the level geometry. I'm dumb. There it is, the one and only other time in the game we see the lightning machines. This time used in our favor to grant us access to the source of evil, giving us a very, very pleasant feeling of finality to this expansion. Hey, remember those early screenshots of Quake that featured a dragon that this team said was never coded and only made for promotional material? Well, that was underwhelming. All you gotta do is stay behind him and empty your strongest ammo into it. The earthquakes were annoying, but it's not like it did much to attack. And you spend a good amount of time in the air thanks to the anti-gravity bracelet, so the earthquakes were really only a problem when they ran out. It's kinda lame to be honest. I heard that the final boss of DOE was a dragon, and I guess I assumed it would be bigger. Like Skyrim sized or something. What's with all these classic id software IPs throwing dragons at us in the second DLC? It is pretty cool that they finally made the dragon a reality though. I feel like it was positively poetic to end the Quake 1 trilogy on, though I think it would have been better fit as a common enemy type if made a little weaker. Alright, it's time to turn in the souls of the guardians we've slain. Have you ever played Luigi's Mansion? Ranger destroys Quake's temporal energy converter time machine, finally ending Quake's reign for good and saving all of reality from the overlord's disillusion of eternity, with Ranger escaping the dark realms through a slipgate, though never to be heard from again, at least until Quake Champions. Isn't it funny that Quake Champions added Scourge cosmetics and completely skipped over dissolution of eternity? I guess I see where their priorities lie. Yeah, I don't have nearly as much to say about this expansion. I still enjoyed it, I think more than Scourge, which I already enjoyed quite a bit, but hey, with Night Dive's Kex Engine Remaster, which comes with Hypnotics and Rogue's expansions, now is a great time to give it a shot for yourself if it's something that you're interested in. I'm gonna take a short break from Quake 1 for a bit, the next time we visit an id software game it's gonna be with an enemy force that I think is even worse than Lovecraftian Abominations. Is that even possible? Yeah. Yeah it is. And it's more realistic than you think.